Good morning. Today we're headed to the Bonneville Salt Flats for some high speed testing. We'll be searching for the maximum speed for this truck and trailer combination. We'll be also testing some friction sway bars, installing those to see what effect they have. Usually the maximum speed is governed by the air drag and power, but today we want to discover the top speed limited by vehicle dynamics. It's called the critical speed, and when you hit this, the trailer oscillations grow, causing the vehicle to spin out of control. Normally, the critical speed is so high, no one cares about it because you could never reach it. But if we move enough mass to the back of the trailer, we think we can reduce the critical speed to within reach for our testing. We're bringing bags of salt for weight, which are currently loaded where they should be in the front of this trailer. When we get onto the flats, we're gonna transfer these bags of salt here to the tail. This F-150 has trailer sway mitigation. We believe and hope and pray that this will step in when we reach the critical speed to save us before things get too far out of control. Trailer sway mitigation is an outgrowth of stability control. When the vehicle senses yaw that doesn't match the steering wheel angle, the vehicle will apply the right or left brakes to create counter torque and bring the vehicle back in line. After some testing, we'll install these friction sway control devices. These have brake material on them and are designed to resist trailer oscillations. We took I-80 out to the flats. It's about a two hour drive from our headquarters. When we got there, it was deserted. We had the whole 12 mile stretch to ourselves. We began driving the trailer as is. I was driving and drove it 10 miles an hour, 20, 30, on up to 80 miles an hour. At each speed, I would give the steering wheel a quick jerk to unsettle everything. Each time, the trailer would straighten out quickly and settle down. Next, it was time to move trailer mass to the rear. We took the salt bags from the front of the trailer and placed them on the cargo carrier. For our first runs, we took it slow. At 10 miles an hour, it didn't really feel all that different. At 20, after I jerked the wheel, I could feel the trailer push back on me a bit. The tail was wagging the dog. At 30, it started to feel squirrely, and I could feel the trailer oscillating a few times after jerking the wheel. At this point, it got scary enough that I kept my fingers near the trailer brake controller manual override. At 40 miles an hour, when I jerked the wheel, the trailer made a few big oscillations, and then the trailer sway mitigation stepped in. It straightened us out and slowed us down. We did this for quite a while to get comfortable with the system. Now it was time to install the friction sway control bars. We installed two, tightening them down, and then re-ran the same test, recording the top speed. No excuses. All right, so this is with the sway control um, engaged, um, and then the weight in the tail. Kind of scary. That's kind of scary. But... Chandler was the first to try a true straight line speed run up to the critical speed. At the critical speed, oscillations grow, so the amplitude of the initial disturbance doesn't matter much. Just a pebble in the road is enough to start a tiny oscillation, and when it grows, it doesn't take long to overwhelm the vehicle. When we hit 45 miles an hour in a straight line, we felt sway begin, and after a few oscillations, the truck's trailer sway mitigation stepped in. In addition to this quantitative test, we also ran tests to measure driver feel. This was a blind test with four drivers. First, we had the driver get a baseline by driving with friction sway engaged and disengaged. Then they drove the runs where the device was engaged or disengaged without them knowing the state. 
The drivers could do whatever they wanted. So they would jerk the wheel back and forth to get a feel for the sway, drive up to the critical speed, etc. After 24 tests, we gathered the data. And by this time, it was getting late in the day. So we headed back to Provo. We've collated the data and here are the results. If you remember the maximum speed this truck and trailer combination without friction sway could go was 45 miles per hour. And with two friction sway control devices engaged, the maximum speed was 45 miles per hour. Yes, it's the same speed and we're virtually the same because we could not detect a difference. And for our driver tests, none of our four drivers could correctly tell the difference when the friction sway devices were engaged or turned off. So what did I learn from this? First, friction sway bars and the concept of friction sway control is a myth. Second, load your trailer right. I don't think a cargo rack on the back of a trailer is a good idea for any, any situation. If you look closely at videos of trailers flipping, nearly every one has a cargo uh, mount on the back that's loaded. And third, vehicle stability control systems and trailer sway mitigation, they work. It allowed us to do dozens and dozens of speed tests without any casualties. Thanks and stay safe out there.